Hello, my name is Gail Chang Bohr, and I am a member of the ABA Section of Litigation Children's Rights Litigation Committee Working Group. I am also a judge in juvenile court. In the next few minutes, I am going to share my thoughts about trafficking of minors and the importance of training judges in juvenile court to recognize that youth who appear before us may have been or are being trafficked for sex or labor. Recognizing and addressing trafficking of minors presents many challenges, including admitting there is a problem and dealing with the hidden nature of the crime. Victims of trafficking do not always present with physical injury, and many of the victims believe that it is their fault or no one will believe them because they do not have visible marks. I think the hardest part is recognizing that there is a problem. We are used to seeing kids who run away from home or who are absent from home for periods of time. Kids who are turned in from school, kids who are in for theft, assaults, receiving stolen property, underage drinking, and illegal drug use. We think we have the tools to deal with these symptoms through weekend learning centers, probation, detention facilities, etc. But we may not realize that something else is going on unless we dig a little deeper. For example, I recently had a situation where the youth, a young girl, appeared before me for fifth degree assault because she had punched another young person after an argument. It was only after I read through the police report that the underlying reason for her behavior came to light. She had punched the other person because that person had been teasing her about having been gang raped. After she pled guilty, the hearing focused on the actions of the young girl and on disposition and not on what precipitated her behavior. At that point, I ordered that in addition to the terms of her probation, she be also seen by our hospital-based youth advocacy center. As judges, we also must recognize that trafficking occurs across all classes. We have to be careful not to assume that only poor kids from the inner city or kids in foster care are the only victims. Middle and upper class families are also affected by trafficking. There are signs that should cause judges to look more closely at the situation to determine if trafficking is occurring. To name a few, Kids who come before us may have a history of being absent from home, especially overnight. They may not feel safe returning home. They may be isolated with no trusted adult to turn to. They may be staying with a much older friend in exchange for sex. They may have a cell phone that has been provided by the friend. They may have clothes and jewelry and other expensive things that are being provided by the friend. And we could go on. This is just the, the tip of the iceberg of the ways victims may present in court. Judges need help in identifying victims and knowing what to look for with the children who appear before them. Judges need to work with the systems to develop help for the victims and we must help systems to develop, to develop expertise and resources specific to victims of trafficking. The training that the Children's Rights Litigation Committee can offer is a first step in addressing the need to bring education and information to judges about this serious problem. 